with Senator Berthel. Good evening, Madam President. It's good to see you up there and again to be back in the chamber doing the people's work. So, you know, I've been listening to the debate for what's now, I guess, going on our fourth hour or so. And um, I find myself looking at all of the emails that have come to my office, more than 500 in the last 24 hours, uh, virtually every one of them in opposition to the bill. The writers include not only law enforcement officers from around the state, but also citizens who understand and believe that this bill will serve to weaken our communities. Some feel this will increase crime and ultimately make us less safe. I remain a steadfast and ardent supporter of law enforcement and the men and women who serve in law enforcement in our communities across Connecticut and our nation. Since this bill came before us and prior even to the debate in the House late last week, and since then, I have spoken with hundreds of police officers and chiefs in my district, all of whom assured me they read the bill. They likely understand it better than I will. I'm not a law enforcement officer. They're deeply concerned, and they also have all asked me to vote against this bill. This is a, arguably a difficult and challenging time for our nation a time of unrest, and a time when we must rely even more upon the safety net provided by lawful policing and keeping of peace throughout our communities. We all accept, acknowledge, and believe that we are a nation built on laws and that these laws protect us and protect our freedoms and liberties. I don't think there's a person that serves in this building that would disagree with that. But I feel that this proposed legislation seeks to undermine and diminish the great and important work that is done by law enforcement officers across Connecticut every day. And from some aspects of a 71-page bill, it seems that we're not looking to hold law enforcement accountable, but instead to hurt them for doing the work they're trained and sworn to do and to make it nearly impossible in some cases to uphold the law. And I think some of the examples that my colleagues have tried to, to the good chair of the Judiciary Committee to get answers on, we really don't know the answers to. And I respect the fact that you can't really necessarily provide an answer in some cases. But I think it speaks to some of the issues with, with the bill. Last Friday morning, the Speaker of the House said, quote, 99% of the cops in Connecticut are good cops. This bill protects us against the 1% that aren't. So essentially, the speaker said we must bring large-scale reform to address the 1% of bad actors. I kind of have a problem with that. Recently, a good friend of mine who is a police officer in my hometown said, quote, that police sometimes do things that make you uncomfortable. It's part of the enforcement of the law. He didn't say illegal. He said uncomfortable. And I said to him, give me an example. He said, do you ever speed and get pulled over? No, never. I never speed. I drive the speed limit all the time. Sure, I guess we've all maybe been pulled over once or twice. I said, how do you feel? I said, yeah, okay, I get it. Now, of course, there's greater examples, more uncomfortable examples. I get it. But this is part of what law enforcement is required to do and part of what we expect them to do when they're enforcing the law. And one of the concerns I have with this bill among others is the change the changes regarding use of force because I think this will make good policing good policing lawful policing difficult we've talked about qualified immunity and I think the changes to the aspects of the protections provided under provided under qualified immunity will force some good police officers to leave their profession and I know we can go back and forth and, and say, well, it really doesn't change anything and, and they're, they're not going to be accountable and they will be and they will have personal liability and they won't. But I think the bottom line is that people more intelligent than me, people that understand this better than I do, feel that this will place law enforcement officers at personal cost and risk. And that serving for these men and women to continue to serve 
will far outweigh any benefit of doing so. I've heard that more from the hundred police officers and cops that I've spoken to in the last week than anything else. And that saddens me greatly because all of the cops that I know are good cops. And again, this will serve to further weaken the safety net and the integrity of our communities. I also think that some of the proposed aspects of this bill will drive up the cost to a municipality in providing law enforcement quite possibly to impossible levels or levels that are not sustainable, which will, from my viewpoint, serve to ultimately defund police departments as they won't be able to afford all of the proposals in this bill, and that's fundamentally wrong. I firmly believe that there is always room for discussion, debate, and differences of opinion in this building and in this chamber. It is what we do best as lawmakers. We agree to disagree. We follow a process. We are inclusive of all viewpoints. I'm having trouble tonight, as some of my other colleagues, Democrats and Republicans alike, trying to understand why this police accountability bill was rushed through the process during the middle of a pandemic when the issue is so critically important to the safety of all of our towns and cities. As was previously mentioned a moment ago, this bill should have gone through months, not days and weeks of discussion and committee. This bill should have had multiple public hearings as the voice of the people is paramount to all that we do in this building under this gold dome. This bill was not, in my opinion, necessary as an emergency certification in a special session in the middle of the summer. And as I mentioned in my comments earlier today, with a stalled economy, a deficit of proportions we've never seen before, with the need to safely and appropriately open our schools in five weeks, it seems to me that we had other pressing priorities we could have been addressing in special session. I'm not saying that the discussion on police accountability is one that we shouldn't have. I just don't know that today is the day that we should be doing it, and I just don't know that we've given enough time to that. And lastly, I think, with all due respect to the chair, the difficulty with this bill is that the district I represent is very different from the district that you represent. You have spoken, Mr. Chair, of the issues that trip up law enforcement in your district. Yet the departments and officers in my district, by virtue of the complaints that are filed, by the lawsuits that are, that are filed, they're minimal, are not seeing the same experiences in my district. So I, I believe earlier you suggested that this is kind of a Maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, and I don't mean to do that, but it's, the, the bill is not a one-size-fits-all bill, unfortunately. Connecticut is a very eclectic state. We have very different communities. We have urban centers like you represent in your city, and you have very rural communities like I represent in my district. And I also fully respect your personal experiences in your life. I've listened to you when you're sitting in your chair over here, and, I, and you're almost in my chair over there. I've listened to you share those stories, and I've watched them bring tears to your face. I respect that, and I understand that. But tonight, I cannot support the changes in this bill that I really believe will weaken law enforcement everywhere that have been rushed in my opinion, and haven't been given the time truly necessary for meaningful, for us to bring forth meaningful reform. I think we will see good cops leave their profession, and we will see difficulty going forward in the recruitment of new police officers. And I'd just like to close in saying that I, I do thank the men and women who put on a uniform every day in Connecticut as police officers, as peace officers, to serve and protect and I thank them for what they do and their service to our great state. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Berthel. Will you remark further on the bill that is before?